uh, I guess inaugural, or not inaugural, uh, annual uh, postseason uh, town hall. want to appreciate uh, everybody turning out tonight, and I uh, want to thank those that uh, are, are at home joining us as well. Um, got Matt Glazer, our technical director and head coach. I'm Connor Kaloya, our COO and one of the owners of Forward Madison. Um, I think we'll start. Matt's got a few comments uh, about this past season and as we look forward to 2024. Uh, I will then uh, offer a few comments as well. Then we'll, uh, we, we've got a handful of questions that have been submitted by fans um, online, and then we'll open it to the group. So uh, once again, good to have everybody here. And uh, Matt, do you want to get us started? Yeah, guys. Uh, look, thanks for coming out. I uh, really appreciate your continued support. You know, I see a lot of familiar faces in here. Um, the, the same group of people that have supported us from the first day that I arrived here. Um, really grateful for that. Really happy to, to be moving forward with the football club for me personally. Um, we felt like this season was, was a good season. We felt like it was a good season. That being said, we know that there's a lot to improve. We know that, we know that our goals for moving forward and for next year are going to be a continual progression. Um, we, we achieved our, our first goal, which was making the playoffs here in, in 2023. Um, we obviously fell short of our ultimate goal, which was to, to win a championship. Um, as we move forward, um, in terms of when we talk about progression, that's what it looks like for me moving forward next year. Our, our, goals, will, our goals will increase, okay? The, the goal next year will not be to just be a playoff team. It will be to be a top four team. And then from there, we want to go and try and win something. So um, that's the goal. Um, overall, pleased with the season. Look, returning four players um, and essentially a rebuilding year to, to have a playoff team, um, I think, is a, is a, is a testament to, to the group and, and how hard we worked. Um, that being said, we're not, at all, um, we're not at all content. We're not at all happy with the way things finished. Uh, there's a lot of hunger in the group. I think there's a lot of guys that you're going to see hopefully returning next year. Um, and, and hungrier than, than, than ever to, to go and improve something. And uh, we have a, a lot to work for. Um, and, you know, we're, we're feeling good about where things are headed. Overall positive, but, but again, hungry. I think that the, the two big messages for me would be positive this year, but, but hungry for more. And I think uh, that's, that's where the club's headed. Um, and that's where I'd like to see, us, to see us end up. Yeah, on the organizational side, business side, obviously it's, uh, you know, uh, good to be in the playoffs, but we, we need to do better. Uh, we hope to do better moving forward. And so uh, we have seen growth from uh, 22 to 23, and we look forward to continued growth. Uh, I, I want to thank all of you here today and our amazing uh, fan support this year. We had seven of our 10 largest crowds in the history of Forward Madison, including a sellout on September 30th. So for the first time ever, we, we were at the fire marshal capacity, 5,000 people, and had to stop selling tickets. Uh, that's just a testament to amazing uh, fan support. Overall, we're up about 12% over last year, and we just we're, we're super appreciative for our fans uh, in the way that you guys continue to support the club. Um, you know, we, we invested in, in the off season in a new video board, new ribbon board, and some new uh, food and beverage items in the flock end, uh, and we're going to continue to invest in the facilities we look to to 2024. We need to continue to do better. Uh, from the food and beverage side of things, uh, and from an investment standpoint, we'll continue. You'll, you'll see additional investment in that space. Uh, and we want to continue to improve the, the match day experience for everybody that comes out. So uh, we're going to get into some questions from, uh, uh, you know, those who are submitted online, and then we'll open it to the group here. Uh, but, uh, and, and I guess I'll be the moderator here. Most of these are for Matt. Some of these are for Matt. But the first question is, Matt, after last season, you discussed some lessons learned regarding style of player and style of play that succeed in USL League One. Is there any further insight you've gained with an additional year of exposure to the league? Yeah, I think that, I think that so first and foremost, the, the coaching staff and I, uh, last offseason, said about first and foremost rebuilding the roster. Um, that, was our, that was our first goal. Um, I thought we, we did a pretty good job of doing that. Um, and again, retaining four guys. Bringing in a whole new team for the most part um, is always a challenge, but I thought the group gelled together pretty quickly. Um, really pleased with that. I felt like our, in terms of our style of play and our identity, we, we kind of got, we went, we went a little bit in, in a different direction in terms of what we were in 2022, and that's a little bit less possession-based, um, a little bit more direct, a little bit more forward thinking. If you look at our numbers, um, last year in 2022, we had the highest p possession percentage in the entire league. Um, but it didn't pan out for us results-wise. So we, we kind of went away from that a little bit um, and tried to be a little bit more progressive. So we ended up being one of the teams in the top four with the most progressive passes in the league. 
um, a team that won, wanted to play forward more often, signing players like Christian Chaney, uh, a hold-up striker, sort of a prototype striker, um, allowed us to do that, to be a little bit more vertical, um, to play in behind teams a little bit more. Um, I think that allowed us to create more chances. Look, we ended up, we ended up top five in expected goals. Um, that being said, we were bottom three in goals scored. So that being said, we, we need to address that. We need to address that. We need to go out and, and, uh, and recruit and, and enhance the, the group, make the, make the group stronger, especially up top. Um, it, it's an important part of what we need to do moving forward. But that, that was my big takeaway. I think, um, I think it paid off a little bit. I think defensively, we were very, we were very strong for a majority of the season. Um, our expected goals against, again, bottom three in the league. I think we ended up in the bottom half of the table in terms of goals conceded. So goalkeeping change. I thought Byrne had a, had a, had a pretty strong year for us. I um, thought our backs had a, had a nice strong year for us. So, so lots to improve still, lots to continue, but, but improving. But I think um, in general, stylistically, we tried to make some changes that allowed us to go from being a, you know, a non-playoff team to a playoff team. And, and we would hope to continue to advance that and, and continue to score goals. I think the big thing for us heading into next season is putting the ball in the net putting the ball in the net and capitalizing on some of these chances that we create. And some of that's going to be down to some recruitment. Some of that's going to be down to continuing to polish and, and define uh, the way that we're going to score goals. But I think in general, uh, we saw a progression and, and, and pleased for the most part. What's the assessment of reasons for end of season four? Last season's end of season results were attributed to player mentality, mostly a new roster this year. So assuming different reasons this year. Thank you. Yeah, I think, look, the end of the season for him was obviously not what we wanted. Um, I think there's, look, I don't like to make excuses. I think at the end of the day, not good enough. Not good enough from myself and the staff. Not good enough from the players. Um, I don't want to make excuses. What I would say is that we did have some things go against us. I think uh, a couple of injuries, the injury to Timmy Mel, the injury to Cello, uh, Cedro Martinez really set us back quite a bit in terms of two key guys that had been with us, you know, key, key contributors for a majority of the season. We lost those guys for extended periods. Jaden Onan, we lost to an injury down the stretch. Um, you know, there, there, was, there were some injuries that hurt us and, and didn't help. Um, that being said, look, at the end of the day, we, we've got to do a better job of closing seasons out, you know. So we're, we're talking to, to ownership and, uh, about, you know, finding ways to enhance our performance over the course of the season, whether that's scheduling, training facilities, um, all these types of things that we're, we're going we're gonna to put effort into to, to, try and, um, to try and get us in, in the best possible situation. But I think, um, look, overall, um, we, were, we were top of the table in the summer. Um, there's no reason why we can't sustain that moving forward and learn from it. You know, myself, uh, myself my staff, we got to continue to learn. We got to continue to figure out how to get the best out of these guys over the stretch of the season. I think the last thing I would say is adding depth. You know, when those injuries do occur, when those injuries do occur and you have, um, you know, you, you, you guys are tired, on tired legs towards the end of the season, we, we've got to find a way to continue to enhance the depth. And when you look at the teams that are playing in the finals and, and the top four teams in our league, they probably had a little bit stronger depth than, than we did. And so that's something that we're going to look to address. Um, there's, no, there's no one simple solution for, for these things. Football is a, a complicated game. Um, but I can assure you guys that my staff and I, the players that we retain, are all going to set our minds to to uh, making sure that we finish strong next season because we have the quality. You know, we saw that. Look, the team that won it yesterday, North Carolina, we, we got seven points from in three games this year. It's not like we, we didn't have the ability to do it. So I think we have the ability to go and do something special next year. Um, I feel good about it. All right, six red cards this season. Not sure how many bench cards, but felt like a lot. Once again, these are not my questions. I'm just reading them. <laughs> This guy has some good points. Uh, guy or gal, I should say. Last year mentioned how bench cards needed to be reduced. Why are we getting uh, the bench cards, and do you think there's any connection to players getting red cards? Thanks. Uh, I'll address that organizationally. Um, yeah, six red cards this year. While that was not good, we were, I think, last in the league in yellow cards. I, I think there are good things to look at. The bench cards did get reduced. That, that is something we discussed with Matt in his group. And it's something we need to continue to work on. Uh, organizationally, we don't like the look uh, of six red cards. You can argue some of those cards. That, that's not what we're here to do today. Um, it is something that we'll continue to work on with, with Matt and the coaching staff and the players uh, to, to make sure um, that, uh, that we're improving in that area and, and, and things are getting cleaned up a little. So it, there was improvement year over year, and, and we'll look for a continued improvement in that space. Uh, in the future, will Forward Madison be open to partnerships or relationships with other clubs involving player development or sharing similar uh, to those in the past, like Minnesota United and the Chicago Fire? So uh, you may remember year one, um, year one we had a, an affiliation with Minnesota United. Years two and three, we had an affiliation with uh, the Chicago Fire. Um, 
during those times, that's when the USL and uh, MLS had a, a collaboration, working relationship uh, that no longer exists. The ML MLS has created MLS Next Pro, and so that's their player development vehicle. So affiliations are no longer allowed between uh, USL clubs and MLS clubs. Now, with that being said, um, could we uh, potentially get a player on loan, like Julio Benitez, who was hurt uh, this year, but, but we did have Huli uh, on a season-long loan from Real Salt Lake. Um, and then earlier in the year, we did have uh, Travis, um, or uh, Wolfgang, uh, Wolfgang Prentice, Prentice uh, on loan from uh, uh, Oakland. So, um, you know, these things can happen, uh, but uh, the, the, the tight relationship that we had with an MLS club, that won't happen moving forward. Will we look at, you know, Matt talked about the importance of depth. Will we look at uh, potentially uh, these loan relationships moving forward? Yes. All right, a couple questions. Uh, any updates on the USL Super League, um, the, the, the women's team, um, and other changes to the, the match day experience? Um, update on, uh, as it relates to women's soccer, uh, we announced in May uh, that we're working to bring first division women's soccer to the U.S. USL Super League here to, uh, to Bree Stevens Field. That's contingent on us uh, working with the city of Madison to have the proper facility upgrades to allow for the first division to be here. That means additional seating, uh, women's specific locker rooms, um, and additional infrastructure needed to host a first division team. So uh, we announced in May that we were doing that. We have a deadline of May 1, 2024 to figure out that funding plan with the city. Uh, we've been working closely with the city uh, and we're working to develop that funding plan to allow for the, the improvements. So no specific updates today, but I can tell you it's something we're working closely with, uh, with the mayor and her team uh, to have something ready by May 1. As it relates to uh, 2024 improvements to the facility, uh, we're still putting together exactly what those improvements will be. You, you saw us invest uh, in the video board last year. Um, we need to continue to work on um, the capability of that video board and how it interacts and enhances the fan experience. But I think uh, you'll see most of our investment next year will likely be uh, in the food and beverage experience in, in additional points of sale uh, for that point, uh, for, for that part of the business. Last question submitted and then we'll open it to the group. Uh, and I'll put, put this one to Matt. What do you look forward to doing during the off season and uh, what are you looking forward to for next season? Yeah, I think for me, it's taken maybe taking a bit of time here at the end of the month, um, getting away from it, but but then it's back to work, really. Um, I don't really take a lot of days off, so um, my staff and I are, are going are gonna to bust our, bust our butts to, to get the team um, in the best possible situation. The off-season doesn't really mean um, a break for us. Uh, maybe we take a few days here or there, but for us, uh, if you come around here, we'll, we'll, my staff and I will be in there. We'll be uh, we'll be recruiting. We'll be uh, on the phone with agents. We'll be on the on the computer looking at players. We're going to be renegotiating with uh, uh, returning players to try and get them back. Um, it's a it's a constant process. It's a it's a 12 month process. So uh, yeah, I'll probably take some time and uh, and get away. But um, it's really it's really back to the drawing board. And, and and again, it's not being content with with just being a playoff team. You know, we're not. None of us are happy about about the, the way the season finished, um, and uh, we all have a, a big hunger to, to go and achieve more. All right, questions uh, from this group, and then we'll, uh, if there's more online, we can go there. Go ahead. Um, do you have an idea of how many players we'll have as far as depth for next season? Uh, I know you had 22 last year and claimed that it was for keeping a close bunch. Is there an idea yeah. of more next year? Yeah, my hope is that we can return 10 to 12 at least. Um, that's my hope. Um, that being said, there's there's a lot that goes into it. You know, we do have options on a couple of guys. Um, I won't go into all the details, but we do have options on a few players. So for sure, we'll have four, three or four back um, already for sure. Um, based on our exit meetings, um, a lot of guys that we consider to be our core group would like to return, are, are interested and happy to return. So now it's just down to, to uh, us figuring out the details and, and making sure that we can we can try to get back the, the strongest group that we can. Um, but there, there's, there's, there's a lot that goes into that and, and time and effort and making sure um, players are comfortable and, and understanding uh, the expectations are going to change a little bit for next year. Um, but yeah, it's my hope and our staff's hope that, that we're bringing back a good core group of guys who, who I think you guys will, will hopefully see were, were consistent contributors uh, for us this, this year. Um, that would be our hope. And then, like I mentioned, we're going to go out and try and enhance the squad as well. 
add some key players, um, add some goals and assists. Um, that's the that's the plan. And, and, and following up on that 22-man roster this year, we ended up a little north of that. Uh, what's the plan to carry for next year? Yeah, I think 22 to 23 is probably around where we're going to end up. Um, but it just depends, you know. It depends on, you know, Connor mentioned the loan situation. Um, there's already been, we've already had conversations with clubs about bringing guys in on year-long loans. Um, that's a possibility. But I think it's, it's really down to, for, for us, I think it's less about an exact number and trying to get the right guys in, the right guys who embody the things that we want, um, the guys who I think perform consistently throughout the year, who I think you guys will, will have seen perform consistently throughout the year, are guys that we want to try and get back in the team. Because, uh, look, it's no secret that, that um, you know, a playoff team is, is, is what, what's, what's put on the field. And I think, um, I think a lot of our guys really, really um, worked hard this year and give everything for the club. And uh, those are the guys that I'd like to try and reward and get back. Um, but like I said, it's not always as simple a process as, hey, we want you back, you're back. It's, um, there, there's more that goes into it. But yeah, we're going to do everything we can to, to try and get our, our core group back. Additional questions? Yeah? Uh, well, so the current contracts or player contracts run through November 30th. So I think the first, um, I guess in theory, um, th there could be news before then, but, but December 1st is when you, when you see, uh, no, normally see that news. Um, but just to walk through that schedule, obviously the USL League One season ended last night. Uh, the current contracts run through November 30th. Uh, contracts will then resume February 1st is the current plan. As far as the schedule, uh, we hope to see that by the end of the year and, and hope to have that public by the end of the year. Are you comfortable with like, when you brought the guys in for preseason last year, as far as like, timing goes and stuff, and the amount of time you had with them and everything? Yeah, yeah, for the most part, like our preseason was, was a definite improvement, um, I think, from the previous year. Having a bit more time, obviously, last year in the offseason to like plan it and get guys in for a proper six weeks. Obviously, we had some international guys come in late. Like Sam got stuck in New Zealand because of like rainstorms or something. I, you know, these things happen. But um, for the most part, like we had, we had a, a good chunk of our core group in um, and we were on the road. You know, we kind of, uh, I think, I think it's a testament to those guys because it's, it's tough, you know, here with the weather, trying to find places to train and uh, taking van rides to Indianapolis to go play and spending a, you know, a few days there, going to Rockford, Illinois and spending time there. I think uh, the guys really bought in and I thought it helped us gel. I think it was a big part of our sort of early season success in terms of um, up through the summer, kind of having good results. And I think it created that collective bond that we wanted to see and the culture that we wanted to see. And then now it's about trying to sustain that over the course of the season. But I was, I was pretty happy as far as preseason goes. Um, you know, um, <coughs> given the given the, the geography and and, uh, and and all the, the the sort of obstacles that we face a little bit, I think we did an excellent job. I thought uh, you know ownership was really was really um, was really flexible to, to allow us to do some things um, that they hadn't done in the past. So I feel really fortunate from, from that side of it, and our hope is to, to do something similar next year, and, and again try and create that bond as early as early as possible. And as far as the report day, we'll have to wait and see when our first game is to actually. You know, we'll, we'll work back from that. I think, uh, you know, the league will continue to start earlier, it looks like. You talked about bringing back a contingent of players. How many of your coaching staff can we expect to see back on the touchline next season? I hope everybody. Um, as of right now, I'm planning to have everyone back on my conversations with those guys, with Neil and JP and Jim and, and uh, you know, uh, have all have all been, we're all, we're all set to go back. We're all... We're all hungry. We're all um, we're all in here. You know, JP's off gallivanting around Europe somewhere right now, but uh, with the bad I back. Him but, uh, yeah. but, uh, but no, no, we're uh, we're we're uh, we're happy. Cruise. Yeah, no, I'm really really pleased with the Spotty staff. Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. No. He's, JP video messaged me from a game and like hungry or somewhere today. So he's he's, he's so telling he, me he's scouting. Sounds some young and some old talent. Yeah, we'll see, we'll like, Seeking out players, 
what recruitment process like? I think we obviously have a fan base and like uh, experience guys like sell who we want to play for a team that's supported. But like, where what's the the, the recruitment package? Here? Are we able to throw money at these guys? Are we able to like what's the process? Here? Is it still like mostly one year contracts? But like, how can we ensure to get guys like Cheney back? Or like, obviously we talk about how many contracts we have. Yeah. To get like, what's our what can we mean on to, to get these players over other teams? Yeah, yeah, I think it's mul it's a great question. I think it's multifaceted, you know, like for a sure. guy like Chaney, we, we have an option year on, you know, we were fortunate to, to get him on it. So, so I mean, Chaney's, yes, yeah, it's a club option. So, so a lot of times, look, these things can be done in a, in a bunch of different ways. And okay. it's usually, it's usually down to the individual player. You know, we don't, we don't do it in a way where it's like everybody gets a one year, a two year, a one okay. plus. The, a lot of times we do, oftentimes we'll do a one plus one, which is a, a one year contract plus a club option, okay. um, in which case we would have the option on the player. So we have a few guys that are, like I said, I, I prefer not to go into all the details of that right now, but we do have some guys that are under, under one year uh, options that we have okay. the option on that we know will, will be back unless someone wants to, to buy them from us. Um, we, you know, we're, we're looking into the possibility. We have some guys that were on one year deals as well. Um, and it's just down to the individual. Everyone has a different situation. Everyone has a different um, family situation. Some guys um, have the, when, you, when you're in this recruiting process, some guys have the, have the, um, you know, have the ambition to go and, and play up a, a level. So we try, to, we try to make it so that it's fair to where, you know, um, we're rewarding them for if they come in and do the business, they have the opportunity to come back. I like to, the way that I like to do it is I like to let our work and our fan base and, and what we provide um, sell itself. Because I, I haven't had many guys since I've been here in two years that have come to me at the end of the season and say, man, I don't want to be here anymore. This is not for me. I haven't had many guys, even if they're on a one-year deal. So um, now that's down to, now I have to go back and renegotiate with those guys sometimes, which can make it tricky. But look, for the, for the most part, we, we, want, we want guys that that want to be here. We want guys that want to be here, um, whether that's one-year deals, one plus ones, or two-year contracts. Um, and I think, I think, uh, you know, I think our core group wants to be here. I think uh, the majority of the guys who, I think, if you look back at minutes played and, and contributions, the guys that were significant in those moments, I would say 90% of them would, would like to be here again. So now it's just down to us getting it done. So, but yeah, like you said, man, like we, we, we have some great things to sell. We have, we have you guys, which is, which not, I can't say one other team in our league has, has you guys um, or close to it. Um, we also, we have, we have a good coaching staff. We have a clear way of playing, um, which is attractive to a lot of guys um, that play at our level. But we also have some obstacles, but those are things that we're working to address. And I feel good that we, we have enough in place to, to go and build a, a championship caliber roster. I think we were, we were really close to it this year. Um, and I think we're, we're a step or two, uh, probably a step away. Yeah. I think that's. Yeah, it's always for me. That's a subjective one. I can say for sure we're well funded. You know, we're one of the top. We're one of the top funded teams. I would say. Um, I don't know all the all the numbers, and I don't know what everyone else spends to a T. But I know that we're we're up there. You know, we certainly put ourselves in a position to be successful, and I think it's just down to us. Like again, going from a being a rebuilding year to now a sustaining year and even a progressive year. And I think that's like, that's got, that's what it has to be next year. Um, that has to be the goal. And I think, uh, yeah, I think the tools are in place. I think it's now just down to us to go out and do it, make it happen, retain the guys that, that we feel, that we feel are going to help us win something and adding to that group is going to be the next phase of it. But, but yeah, I think we're, uh, we're in as good a spot as, as any team. I, for me, the, the playing field evens out depending on geographies and, and, and different little details, but I think um, for the most part, like we're, as, we're set up as well as anyone else. I mean, just, just being transparent on that, I mean, we, we uh, I, I think, have always been in the top quartile from a, a technical investment standpoint. We, we plan to be there. You know, we, we got some data in 22. We were, I think, second in the league. I don't know where we ranked this year. I think we're in the top court, quarter, uh, and we wanna, we're going to continue to invest in the technical side to stay there. You guys are a great attribute to recruiting. Uh, the challenges we have in recruiting are the climate. Uh, y you know, it's a little cold here uh, for some people, not for us, but we're from here. But, but for some people, it's a little cold. And, and, and I know we chuckle at that a little bit, but that is um, a challenge, especially with a, 
a player talent pool that, that most of them didn't grow up around here. So, um, you, you know, they're used to warmer climates than, than Madison, Wisconsin in February, March, April, and, and you know, after October. Um, and then secondly, you know, we'll own it is, is our playing surface is towards the end of its useful life. And in, in the coming years, we're going to have to work to get that fixed. Um, and we have to address that from a training perspective. And so we're aggressively pursuing uh, other options from a training uh, facility standpoint for as soon as 2024 uh, to address that. So we are, we are working to counteract some of these potential recruiting challenges we may have. We, we can't change, I mean, the only thing that can help us with the weather is global warming, uh, and I don't know that I'm cheering for that, uh, but, but, uh, but we, we can't change the weather, but what we can change uh, is the training environment. And, and uh, while it is challenging in this market with a, not, um, not really any pro level grass pitches, uh, we, we are working to try and figure out a solution for 24. Uh, we have a, a question submitted uh, online. Since uh, Ford has a relationship with Eintracht Frankfurt, is there any chance of a loan E uh, from an academy player? We, we're fortunate to have a good relationship with our, our friends in, in Eintracht. Uh, it's been more um, based uh, from a camp and clinic in, in standpoint. Um, we haven't had extensive conversations with them um, from a talent development standpoint, but I, I would say that our are, are, there's a higher level of technical discussion than there has been in the past. I don't know that that will result in additional players, but we're, we, we have a good relationship there and uh, we'll always keep the door open. Mitch? Yeah, uh, travel has consistently been an issue for us, mostly because the league is lopsided towards the Southeast for no particular reason, it feels like. Um, is there anything uh, that is being looked at this offseason to kind of mitigate some of the issues that we've had and help sort of? Uh, just a clarification or question: Are you asking looked at from a league level or, or from a from an club, organiz- club, club level? There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do from a league level. So, you know, what can we do from a club level to kind of mitigate some of the issues that we've had uh, from a travel perspective in terms of um, just you know it being, it being a lot of travel, um, you know, especially when we get long road trips like we had in in July and August. Yeah. What sorts of stuff? Uh, is there anything that's been looked at by the club in terms of maybe making that better for the players and for the staff in terms of like being prepared for games? Yeah, I mean, I'll start and then maybe Matt can, can finish. But yeah, that, that is a topic we've talked a lot about since the end of the season. Uh, I think the first thing we can do while we don't have total control over the schedule, um, it is trying to influence the schedule. You, you know, that three consecutive uh, weeks where we were uh, South Georgia, Fresno and Chattanooga, and we ended up getting stuck in Fresno. It ended up being in Fresno for what ended up being five days, uh, four days, five days. Mm-hmm. Um, th- those things are challenging, and they wear on the guys, and, and, and both mentally and, and physically. Uh, so, you know, while we can't control the schedule, we do need to, once we see a draft, we do need to try and um, avoid those coast to coast type road trips, uh, uh, or not road trips, uh, fl- flights. Um, and then, you know, we have, had, we have had discussions, you know, Spokane, we, we're excited to, to have another team in the league and there's a good ownership group there, but, you know, Spokane's a little ways from here. Uh, so when we're going to Spokane, we're going to Fresno, do we look at taking an extra day or do we look at doing something uh, to, to make that a little easier? Um, the, the challenge of this league is a, a 12-team national league playing in secondary and tertiary markets. We're, we're regional airports, not national uh, or international airports for the most part. So, um, you know, when you're going to Fresno, it's normally a 12-hour trip, and you're normally leaving here at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., whether it be via bus to get to Chicago to fly there or flying out of Madison and connecting somewhere. And as we evaluated in the off-season, a lot of what wears on the, the team is these 4 a.m., or 3 a.m. wake-up calls to catch a bus, to catch a, a flight, or to get to the airport. So it's something we're aware of, and, uh, you know, will we maybe spend a little more in an additional hotel night? Um, you know, we're, we're limited in travel options. There's only so many flights you can get out of here, get out of Chicago, or potentially Milwaukee. So we are, we are you know, that is something we're, we're working to address and discuss um, and, and add, potentially adding to the budget there to, to allow for an extra day for players to acclimate when they're on the road. You summed it up pretty well. I, from my perspective, like as long as we're having those discussions, like I'm feeling good. And Connor's been very like accommodating as it, as it turned, you know, as, as we've spoken about these things. Um, 
Um, he knows that, you know, we, we know that we're going to do the best that we can, under, given the circumstances. We're, we're a regional market in, in a national league, so we, we can't control all that. I do think depth uh, is something that I can do from our perspective to help with that as well. You know, I think addressing the depth, we, I think we had the second least amount of substitutions, us in Omaha, um, and then Lexington was first. So I think, like, we had 128 substitutions, which was second, the second least amount in the league. That, for me, that says, A, um, I've got to go out and, and, and address the depth piece. So that way, if um, Jake Krul doesn't have to play uh, every minute of every, of every game necessarily, you know, um, if, he's, if he's tired or the, the, the plane ride is taking a toll on somebody. Because we had a lot of guys who were fighting through, fighting through stuff to, to play in, in these games. <coughs> and and uh, it's not always, look, the nature of the league, we can't always, we, we can't always you know, dictate our schedule. But um, the more influence we have, the more depth, the, the, the controllables, the things that we can control. I think we're, we're on the same page and trying to address that, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best from, from there. So I have a question. You mentioned earlier about uh, recruiting or people that know the climate here, know the city. How much are you looking at potentially recruiting, looking at the Badger soccer team, looking at Madison College potentially doing invite or open tryouts uh, this, this offseason? Yeah, we're looking regionally. We always Jim, uh, Jim Launder and, uh, and Keith a little bit, but Jim is my uh, my 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 Midwestern liaison, uh, I guess you could call it. So he's Midwestern region. Yeah, scout, he's the yeah. he's the the regional executive assistant to the to the manager or whatever. But um, he um, j j like we we do to to seriously answer that. Yeah, we we look in market. You know, we invite guys into preseason. Um, if there's guys that we feel. Are ready for a contract you know we're, we're, we're looking at that um, I do think I do think it is a challenging it is a little bit of a challenging market okay outside of University of Wisconsin there's some some guys that that could play I think at, the, at this level for sure um, when you get outside of that then you start looking at more of a Midwestern I, I think thing so what we do is we try to evaluate um, a lot of the the local colleges um, in, the, in the sort of our, our region and, and evaluate who their better players are. We try to do it with the understanding that MLS and MLS Next Pro are probably going to get the first crack at, at, at some of those guys, but not always, but not always, especially the international ones, so, which is always a tricky one to, to sign an international out of college. Some, some people won't do it, but we're, we're not against it. But I think it's just, I think it's just down to, to, yeah, if we can find somewhere. Like we signed Eric Connerty out of Western Michigan. Like he was a good pickup for us, a good depth piece. I think... Um, I think if there's some more guys like that, diamonds in the rough, there's some there's some good college soccer out this way. You know, we're looking into it for sure. Um, and yeah, and then it's down to yeah. I think you know Keith and I have another conversation coming about about doing an open tryout and or maybe an invite tryout and uh, getting that going. But I think that's uh, that's something that's that's still sort of uh, up for debate. But I I think we'll probably end up doing something, um, whether that be inviting guys into preseason, doing something invitational or open. I think we'll I think we'll probably. End I think up last year we did an invite tryout in Rockford, yeah. uh, which. Some folks did fly in, but it was, I'd call regional, primarily regional, invite, tryout. And uh, I would expect us to do something else uh, before the end of the year, um, you know, in the Midwest region. Yes? Uh, did you have any update about Santa Barbara Sky if they take it the next few years? Because I know they're supposed to start here in 24. Um, yeah, I, I do not expect that. I think the, I don't want to speak out to her, but I think the league has announced the teams for, for next year. And, uh, and maybe this parlays into the, the question here submitted asking about uh, North Carolina FC moving up to championship. So North Carolina FC has opted to, to move back up to championship. They were a championship club. Um, came down, I think, for, what, a couple years, two, three years? And then uh, three years, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you for fact-checking. Um, look at that. Re real time. It's pretty good. Um, and, uh, and then they've opted to move back up. Um, and uh, the, the question here is what are criteria for a move? You know, I, I can't speak to that. I think that's up to the league and the arrangement they had with, with North Carolina. Um, you know, I think for everybody else that's a League One club, there'd be a, a franchise uh, fee uh, associated with moving up. And then, you know, there's certain um, second division U.S. soccer requirements as well. Um, I think we, we meet those from a seating standpoint. I think we fall short of those from a market size standpoint. Um, this is an annual question, but I think League One's the right place for Ford Madison, and I think we're in a good spot, and we want to go ahead and win a championship here before we worry about other challenges. Um, to answer your question on the number of teams, it'll be 12 teams, Spokane's joining, um, and uh, North Carolina's moving up. Yes, Chris. Some of our, our 
Yeah, it's a great, great question. We, we started uh, Forward Futures this year, which, um, you know, since we started here, we've always been club neutral in the youth space, me meaning that we want to work with all 41 clubs. We don't want to uh, take preference, and nor do we want to compete with them. And um, there's not a, a, currently an academy um, in the Madison market. There's a couple in the, uh, the Milwaukee market, but not in the Madison market. And so we started, uh, I wouldn't call it an academy, but we started kind of a, a bridge for the summer months um, called Forward Futures, where it's 13 to 16s and 17s to 19s. Uh, I think about 50 kids in total, um, all Madison-based, and that was a great start. Uh, Aaron Holbein uh, led that program for us and did a great job, along with Keith Kemar, and uh, that's something we'll continue to build on, um, something we'll look to go year-round, uh, not, not year-round, excuse me, we, we, we won't compete um, with, with the high school seasons, but we'll go from the end of the high school season, um, you know, through the start of the high school season. Um, or fairly consistently. And we're looking to continue to build on that program. The idea is to have a pipeline uh, to the first team eventually. So not a formal academy, uh, but at the same time not competing uh, with the youth clubs, being working with the youth clubs uh, to, to provide a, a higher level of training to some extent. Dave. The um, first couple of years, the club brought some real uh, amazing international teams in for international friendly youth. It seems like last year, last Obviously, the pandemic has been a big issue there, but um, has the organization's thinking around friendlies evolved, uh, and what are the plans or thought process uh, for international friendlies and how it helps board win championships moving forward? Um, yeah, I, th I think that's a, a good question. You know, we, had a, we added a home game, um, or, or added two games to the league schedule, including a home game. Um, and so that shrunk the, the number of friendlies we could have. Um, oh, all right. We're having a, hold on, let, let's just fix something here. It's my fault. Sorry about that. No, it's all you. I muted the. Uh, there we go. Um, all right, sorry about that. Um, so. One less friendly last year. We, we want to continue and have played UW since the start. Um, that's a great community. We, we feel a great community soccer match and something we want to do on an annual basis, even when it is um, you know, early in the season. We, we think that that's a, a good community game to have. Uh, we've brought in a, a club from Mexico, um, I think, in every year. I think in, in, in 2021, we were the only, I think the only club in the USL to do an international exhibition. And so that's something we want to likely continue to do. Uh, but, um, you, you know, we were fortunate to have some great teams from Germany, and, and I think getting a club from Germany or, or England or potentially Spain is something we're open to and looking at uh, for next year as well. So a lot of it shakes out. Uh, you know, our friendlies, we don't want to be put too much of a load on the, on the, on the, on the players, especially in our, our busy months. And a lot of times uh, a good window for us to do a friendly is when there's a lot of schedule congestion for, for the, the guys. So we, we have to look at that. Um, and, uh, but at the same time, we think it's important for season ticket holders to have a, a high-level experience, not just league matches, but, but friendly uh, exhibitions, international exhibitions as well. So we are working on it for next year already. It's gonna, a lot of it's going to depend on what our schedule looks like and, and what, what gaps, what openings we have to, and who's available during those times. Yeah? Follow-up question on the schedule. What's up with all the midweek schedules this past season? It seemed like we had a lot of midweek games compared to previous. Where always count on that Saturday home game. Seems like we have a lot more Wednesday. Yeah, th that's a fair question. Um, a couple things at play. You know, while League One is in its fifth year, it's still developing as a league. And uh, we have a handful of clubs that um, do not control their facility yet. Um, and so that does create a trickle-down effect when, when clubs don't control their facility. We're fortunate here that we, we control our facility and we can dictate those dates. Um, but when um, other clubs don't control their facility, that some, sometimes creates off dates, or not off dates, but weird days of the week you're playing, and then that you know, it has a trickle-down effect, whether it be the game before or the game after. Um, you know, we're fortunate here that, that we do pretty well from a fan standpoint on week uh, days versus weekends. With that being said, I think we, we had too many... Um, weekdays last year, and it's a priority to, to try and, um, you know, reduce the number of weekday matches that we had a year ago. 
because uh, we know it's challenging for a lot of people to, to get here on time. But um, you know, we 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 build uh, whenever the schedule window is agreed upon by owners that the board of governors in the league. The idea is always to pretty much have almost all Saturday games, and then when you see the the slate of games come out amongst the league because of facility challenges, that's normally not the case, or it's never the case. <laughs> Joe. Yes. Yeah, so we'll go to the, uh, the scheduling. So and the friendly. So I uh, heard you talking about nine chart Frankfurt. I know it's probably a pretty big ask, but would they ever come for a friendly? Maybe. Um, or even along with that, I remember Augsburg was supposed to come in 2020, and with the with COVID, it was scheduled. There was a talk of it being rescheduled. Anything on that, or? Kind of yeah, no, I, I, you know, we, we were fortunate to uh, have heard to Berlin in our first year of a first division, you know, Bundesliga club. Um, I, I think since then, um, a lot of the top division uh, German clubs, their, their managers prefer not to play on turf. So, so that, that's kind of been our hurdle. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we'll continue to try. We, we have had some conversations in the past couple of years and we'll continue to discuss that. It's really just getting, um, you know, there's been uh, over the last, since the pandemic, I don't think it's correlated, but there's just been um, less interest in playing on artificial turf from, from these European clubs. So we'll continue to work at that and we'll see what happens. Okay. Mitch? Uh, any other changes beyond like kind of scheduling stuff like that? Um, any other changes you're looking for or pushing for at the league level? Or changes or improvements? <laughs> Well, You're free to speak about it. how much time do we have here? <laughs> Where's the record button? Uh, um, we'll turn that off. No, um, uh, no. I listen. We've got a great group at League One, and, and I, I want to uh, recognize or credit this year. We have a, a new League One president as well, Leo Neal, who's been amazing. Uh, he, he came from uh, Ipswich Town, and he's been uh, just great to work with. So, you know, at the league level, and I think there's a question in here on promotion relegation. Um, you know, I think what I would say to that is there continues to be discussion on that. Um, I think if you're a, a League One club, um, promotion relegation isn't as weighty of a subject uh, as if you're a championship club. It's, it's a much bigger um, topic to address. So uh, I think there continues to be discussion on that. There's some Board of Governors meetings at the League uh, in early December. Um, you know, changes to the League. Um, you know, I, I think the league is taking good steps to try and develop uh, uh, more referees and, and develop a talent pool there. And I think their relationship with with uh, Pro Pro Two has been great, uh, and, and we applaud the league and, and Pro Two on their development there. Um, I think more teams is important, and we'd love to see more Midwestern or bus trip teams. Um, Matt's mentioned it. I've mentioned it. It's tough to to play in a national league uh, flying out of Madison, Wisconsin. Um, so. You know, those are the changes we'd like to see. I think the league has been responsive um, from a uh, schedule formatting uh, standpoint, and, and we're excited to, uh, you know, get the schedule out and, and discuss more about that uh, before the end of the year. Mitch? I hate this question. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe just the person asking it. Uh, <laughs> fair. Uh, question. Um, so USL was actually the... Uh, the old USL pre-championship was the testing ground for VAR in this country. Has there been any talk in USL about uh, about bringing VAR back in? Yeah, it's a, that's actually a very good question for a very good guest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, 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 listen, I, I firmly think, and I'm not sure that everybody, you know, we've got a great ownership group in League One. I don't know that everybody totally agrees, but um, this is a great league, but the reality is we're the third division of U.S. soccer. Uh, we're, we're not the first division. And I think we should be a, a, a test lab to some extent to, to innovate and try new things. And so, you know, I, I know you, you, if you read a lot about VAR in, in, uh, in the Premier League, uh, the, the, the cost, the, the, the Saturday cost, I forget what the number is, but I think it's like $1.8 million or something that it costs almost every Saturday. Um, but it, it's an exorbitant number. If there is a uh, more reasonable financial way to do VAR or something similar, and we can be a, a testing ground or a tra trial ground for that, I wouldn't be opposed to that. I, I think we need to innovate at this level um, and continue to do things differently. So uh, I think that's a handful of years away. Um, but, you know, um, I know there's a lot of discussion around more cost-effective video replay systems. And um, if there's uh, one that works, 
you know, would we maybe be a good testing ground for that? I wouldn't be opposed to it. I don't know what Matt's take on that is, but uh, <laughs> but 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 I, I do think we need to to uh, to continue to, to to innovate at this level. Yes. Have there been any conversations about USL and the US expansion team? Um, you know, I, th I think there's been some markets mentioned that are League Two markets, but I haven't heard anything else new uh, recently. Um, yeah, I think I think most of the stuff you're seeing publicly is is uh, is plane trips from here at this point, at least. Has there been any talk, like at a league level, at a pro level, about what they're planning on doing this next season to improve the officiating? Because like you know, we talk about it in vague terms a lot, but there's there's a growing frustration among the fan among fans in general, not just at Fort Madison, but league-wide. Um, I think the, the Knoxville game this last season was a turning point where if we'd have gotten a result from that game, it, it could have done something for us down the stretch. But I think the, the bigger question is, like, you know, last year on January, February, we heard very publicly on social media about this sort of falling out between Pro and USL, and then it got real quiet for a while, and then they started working together again. Is Has there been any kind of like legitimate conversation around how they actually plan to move things forward as far as the officiating goes? Yeah, I, I think, uh, I, I think uh, the league would have to speak more to that. I, I think what I can say on that is um, I think Pro 2 is the long-term plan for, uh, for the USL. Um, and I, I think there are uh, steps being taken to continue to develop and improve that. I think it's not something that happens overnight. Um, and, you know, we were fortunate to have the, uh, um, the uh, supervisor uh, for, for, for Pro 2 actually visit a game here and spend some time with, with Matt and I. And, um, you know, we do feel like they're uh, working at it and going in the right direction. Uh, there were several times this season when we um, – had questions or points of clarification following matches, uh, and they were always uh, responsive and willing to discuss. And, and, and I, I thought, um, you know, uh, really willing willing to share. So, um, you know, I know we hear a lot from fans on uh, the referees, and it's not an easy thing. If you look across the country, um, you know, there's a shortage of referees at I think almost every level. Um, it's a challenging job, especially at this level where it's not a full-time position. Um, so, uh, you, you know, I, I think it's something that owners in the league continue to push the league on, continue to work with the league. And I do think, um, you know, we are seeing Pro put together a, a longer-term plan. And uh, while at times it can be frustrating to, to fans, I think it's something we have to be patient on and, and just hope it's something that improves year over year. And, 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 you know, we're appreciative that they're responsive and we're appreciative that they are putting a, a plan to continue to develop officials. You know, the game's growing rapidly. And as the game grows, there's a need for more and more officials. And so it takes time to develop those folks. In the back here, and then we'll go. Um, for the home games, it feels like this year and last year, we're almost always attacking the clock in the first half and then the patterson set in the second half. The first couple seasons, it seems like it was the inverse, and we're always attacking the clock in the second half. Is that our choice or opposing teams changing? Uh, good question. I think it, it varies. You know, we try to look at... It depending on the game. So, for instance, there's games where we like to attack the flock end first, because, and it, a lot of it depends on, you know, who we are, right? So we were a team this year who, if you look at us statistically, we were a team that when we went out in front, a lot of times we ended up getting a result. When we conceded first, we, we struggled. And so when we were at home, we want to be on the front foot. One of the things that we looked to do was attack the flock end first for a number of reasons. One, you guys are back there giving the other goalkeeper, you know, an earful, which helps us. The guys get the guys get pumped up when they score down at that end, probably a little bit more than normal. I don't, I haven't looked at the, the ratios. Maybe Mitch, maybe Mitch could help me with that. But, 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 but in terms of in terms of um, in terms of that, the other thing that I like about it at times is that um, I like to have our guys in front of us sometimes early in the game to help them organize and, and do some things. So, but, it, but it's different. It's a different game to game. Sometimes if the sun's going to be in somebody's eyes, we look at that 
Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different reasons, and sometimes it's tactical. Sometimes it's, it doesn't matter to us as much. We just want to have the ball first, and maybe the other team uh, you know, gets the pick, you know, or we lose the coin uh, toss, and they get the pick. So it's not, it's not overly tactical, but I think this year we were definitely a team that wanted to try and get out on the front foot, um, and uh, that, that might, that might be, have something to do with it. Go ahead. Yeah, I think that's something that we'll know more on in the next week, I think. Um, yeah, that, that's got to come from the league, uh, but, but I think the, the league will have an announcement on, um, you know, what broadcast looks like moving forward in the, in the near future. I don't have an exact date, but sometime in the near future. And, and I don't know the details on it. I just know that it's close to, to being uh, public in the next couple weeks. Yeah, John. The fan sports stuff. Is there anything we've been doing that might be a blind spot to us as the fans that is not something the players want, the uh, like leadership? Like, are the whoops more confusing to us <laughs> setting a defensive line than it is to the other <laughs> Anything like that? No, no, I wouldn't. Ha I think that that's all. That's all good. I, I think that. I have every every piece of um, every piece of feedback I've gotten from players. I don't know Connor meets with the guys as well, but I, I haven't like everything's been positive. I think uh, they really appreciate it. They, you know, I think making the noise the noise uh, the noise helps. The noise helps. Um, it helps us. It should help us. Um, so yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm happy with it. I, we like the the fan engagement's big time for us, and, and uh, I, w I wouldn't have anything uh, anything uh, cr critical to say. Yeah, you, you know, I think uh, generally it's a challenging business. I think there's about 120 pro clubs in the U.S. I think less than 10 are, are profitable or break even. Um, you know, we're, we're not there yet. Uh, I think we're uh, the closest to it at, at our level or, or close. But I, I would, um, we, while our, our, our revenue is growing at about a 20% clip, uh, our expenses are growing around 15%. I think there, there is a handful of expenses that we didn't expect at this time last year um, related to, to broadcast and, and a handful of other things that uh, didn't allow us to kind of close that gap uh, as much. I, I think uh, while we'd love to uh, be one of those 10 or 11 or 12 clubs in the league that's profitable, I, I think our focus is more on getting it right on the field before we get to profitability. I think, I think it's a challenging uh, business model and, and what the amazing support we have allows us to continue to invest in the technical side and we're going to continue to invest in the in the technical side um, and uh, you know I, I think we're, we're getting better if you look at it just as a business we're, we're, we're improving but uh, it's going to be a while before we get to to a break-even point and, and we're good with that um, because we, we want to make sure we're getting things right on the field first yeah I guess from a, a sort of like from a fan perspective I think there is some cynicism every once in a while about like, I mean, I, I didn't hear nearly as much about it this last year as far as trying to sell kits, trying to sell training jerseys, whatever it is. But I think there's a sort of misconception among the fan base and maybe at a wider level amongst USL1 fans that Ford Madison is just trying to, you know, uh, at, so at times the cynicism bends towards you know, bleep, squeeze from blood from a stone, so to speak, as far as selling kids, selling merch, selling whatever it is. How much does that stuff, the fan support in that regard, become <coughs> club solvent? And speaking specifically to your point about like the, the club not being in the black hand. Yeah, I, I mean, um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 we're we're fortunate to have amazing fan support and. and we want to continue to grow that and continue to create an environment that makes people want to support the club. Um, we don't do everything perfect. Uh, and, you, you know, I think we've learned a lot in our six years of running the club. Um, you know, 
as far as those that, that comment on, uh, you know, our kits and those sales and those type of things, um, our fans seem to like those things, and, 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 and they buy them. Um, if you stop buying them, we'll stop selling them. You know, it's, 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 it's not that simple, but it's like, I think, I, I think in Omaha, you might not like the number of kits you have, but in Madison, I think you guys like the number of kits we have, and I think you like the designs, and I, and I hear from you that you do. So, you know, we, we try not to worry too much about what's happening um, in other markets or what other people are, say, are saying. We've built this business on listening to you. Uh, when we hired Matt, it was you guys interviewing the coaching candidates. Uh, our colors, our team name, our crest, that was decided by you guys. And we're going to keep listening to you. We don't really care what people are saying in Omaha or other places. We care what you're saying, and that's what's going to drive this business. Especially in Omaha. <laughs> Here you are, Dave. Dave, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, moving it off the business side for a second, uh, one of the things I really appreciate uh, Matt's leadership is his focus on how numbers can tell a story. Um, and we're grateful, I think, at least I am, many people are about the style that the team plays, uh, that we play the game in, on the front foot in, a, in an attempt to play the beautiful game. Um, shot conversion was abysmal. We already talked about that. Um, our passing has continued to be a beautiful thing, uh, and numbers back it up, what the eye test. One thing that um, the numbers also show is that we were towards the bottom on uh, winning duels and tackling. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, mm -hmm. You made, I believe, a, a pretty big and important point um, when you first came on about grit and, and how important it is to mm -hmm. win tackles. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's winning tackles in the final third or in midfield, you know, that we, we probably were on the lower side of the league. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you see that, uh, and, and if you do, if you agree with that, uh, what, what can we do about that? Yeah, it's a good question. I think. Um, I think as it pertains to tackles, it's interesting because we're, we're one of the teams in the league that it's not necessarily the way that when I signed on, I wanted to do it. Um, I probably, in a perfect world, we'd be a little bit more high pressing. We'd be a little bit more man oriented at times, which, which could attribute to more tackles, right? more duels in general, the, 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 whether they're successful or not. There would just be more interactions like that. The way we elected to set up with, with the roster that we ended up assembling um, was a little bit more mid-block. So like when we defend, we're not quite as high press. We're a little bit more mid, probably middle third kind of defensive team. We're zonal defending. So whether we're in a 4-4-2, there was times where we played 3-5-2, 3-4-3. No matter what, our principle is zonal defending. So sometimes that increases. If you look at the amount of, for, for instance, interceptions that we have, it's top of the league. But if you look at the amount of individual duels and 1v1 duels, we're bottom. So some of that is, yes, we need to increase the, the rate that we tackle, especially in, in uh, danger areas, like in our defensive third of the field. There's times where I think we can be a little bit more aggressive, win those duels. There's times where we, as a defensive core, did a really nice job of preventing things happening. For instance, burned, you know, I think our shots against was, was, was one of the better, better uh, metrics in the league in terms of, you know, we don't concede a lot of opportunities. So I think part of your question is, can there be improvement? Yes, there's times where when we're chasing the game, we're down a goal. We have to do a better job of stepping up, putting teams under pressure, and winning those duels, and putting ourselves in a position to win those duels. A lot of times, because of the way that we set up generally, we were in more of a mid-block zonal defending scheme. And so that, uh, more times, we ask players to play in passing lanes. So when we say, we say protect the inside, make them play around us, not through us. We want to force the ball into certain areas, um, and, and which, which I think sometimes, like, takes away the number of actual defensive duels that they have to make because we're shifting, we're trying to cut passes off rather than play man-oriented. Like there's teams in our league that are, that are very man-oriented, like a Richmond, um, who are, man, we're, we're going to kind of stick with our guy, like we're going to go in and tackle, and, and whether it's working or not, like we're going we're gonna to roll with it. Um, and, and, you know, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I just think that was based on the personnel that we kind of ended up with this year. We ended up a little bit more, I don't want to say passive, but a little bit more zonal defending, mid-block, keep the game in front of us. Um, but that being said, to your point, um, it's definitely something that we have to do a better job of in the 1v1 duels. When you see in some playoff games, we're getting beat one-on-one -on, -one on the dribble um, in the playoff game. Better job, and it can't just be about 
making sure we have the numerical superiority. We got to make sure that we're, we're winning our duels, and I think that's a, that's a big part of what we're going to try to address. But for the most part, I think the the bigger the bigger um, the bigger concern for me is the shot conversion thing because I think defensively, on the whole, since I've been here, we've been pretty strong defensively um, um, in terms of just our structure, our, our ideas, um, our one v one defending can be better for sure. But I think defensively, we've been decent. We've got, we've got to put the ball in the net. We've got to find ways to put the ball in the net, and I think. That, that just comes down to a lot of work that we're going to need to put in here in the offseason to address that. But, but um, yeah, really good question, and, and uh, yeah, appreciate it. Any other questions? All right, well, we really appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Uh, it's just great to see the amount of people that are here. Uh, great to see a whole bunch of people online, and just uh, want to thank you for your continued support of the club. Uh, you know, 2023 was a, w w to Matt's, uh, I think, comment was a good year. Uh, it was good. We made the playoffs. It was good from a, from a support and, and environment standpoint, but I think uh, the work has started, and uh, we're ready to make 2024 a better year, whether it be from a facility and fan experience standpoint or from an on-the-pitch results standpoint. We're committed uh, to continue to do continuing to do better for you guys. And we appreciate everything you do for this club, the way you support it, turning out to things like this. And uh, we look forward to keeping in touch with you over the off season. And can't wait to see you back here uh, in, in April when we uh, reopen Bree Stevens Field. So thanks everybody for your time tonight and uh, enjoy the off season. We look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys.